Hey folks, it's John Burkhauser from Bolt On Technology here, and I have Frank Dragoni with me. And we're about to start telling you how to use Workflow Manager, uh, one of our most recent products that we've put out there, and one that we hope is going to really change the way you do business. But before I get started with that, I am sending out a chat message that basically is saying, hey, can you see me? Can you hear me? And if some of you fine folks could just respond to that chat message and send it in a yes and let me know that you can see this, I greatly appreciate that. And good, we got people coming in already. Thank you so very much. Lots of great responses. Now, why I'm waiting on you fine folks responding, just to let you know that we have quite a large number of people on board. And um, we're not going to be able to open up the microphones, but as we get through this, we're going to ask you to hold off on your questions if you can. And then you're going to chat them in the same way that you're sending on all these wonderful yeses. So great. Everyone seems to be on board. So again, and also just to let you know that this is being recorded. And anyone that signed up is going to get a copy, a link to this, sent to the email that was used to sign up for this actual event. So if we go a little fast, not to worry. Um, you'll get the link and you'll be able to look at it. And also, uh, in the near future, we're going to be um, definitely putting up more information on this uh, because it's a learning experience. All right, cool. Frank, you there? I'm here, JB. Good afternoon, everyone. All right. Cool. I just wanted to be sure you were seeing and hearing everything, too. Oh, I can see everything great. All right, folks. So this is the way I want to approach this. Number one, um, we get to go across the country and stop in a lot of shops, and we see all sorts of different methods for people to get their workflow working, getting the jobs written up, getting them in the system, getting them in the shop, getting the techs on, et cetera, et cetera. You all know what I'm talking about. And we see everything from blackboards with erasers, magnetic boards with little cars on it. We see a lot of different methods. And it doesn't always work that well. Now, some of you folks are right on the money and you can really take care of your business and have that flow work because you're really committed to it. But the thing is, is in many circumstances, we find that it's lacking. So what we wanted to do is put together a product, and that's what you're seeing here with Workflow Manager, that I like to call it your all-in-one place. Um, you just go to one place and you got a ton of information in front of you. And because you have that all in one place, it's going to make you jumping back and forth from different um, things a lot simpler, a lot less happening. And the fact that all that power is at your fingertips is going to make life much better for you. Okay. And does this need to be used in only a large shop? Absolutely not. The smaller shops can benefit from it too. And one of the other things that Bolton wanted to do is make this as customizable as we could. So the idea here is that you can set it up and use it as you feel comfortable. So as I'm going through this, and Frank's going to jump in occasionally, and I might defer to him for a couple of things, but as we're going through this, even though we may give you suggestions, they're only suggestions on how to use it, okay? And I've been playing with this for a couple of weeks now, and I've got some ideas of the way I like to use it, and I'll share those with you. And again, you guys are going to come up with your own ideas and, you know, Maybe share them with us and let us know what you think, okay? So let's get down to it. As I really started off to say is that this thing is extremely you – can, you can set it up to do what you want it to do. You can customize it as much as you want. And the first place you're going to go is settings, and that's in our Report Pro, and then Workflow Statuses. So when you click on Workflow Statuses, what this does for you – this displays all of your statuses that you currently have here, okay? And just to let you know, starting from the top, going to the bottom here, and starting from the left, that's how they manage, they match. That's how they are laid out. So the top status in this window is always going to be the most left status on your display. And you have the ability to go through here and customize, add, and delete most of the statuses, and the reason I say that is because a number of the different products that we support, the different management systems, have statuses that are hard-coded. That means they're built into the software, and they, you can't get rid of them, all right? So they're going to be there. And when you go in there to edit any of these and you find one of those, you hit the edit button and open, if you see that the status is dimmed, okay, that's telling you that that's one of those statuses that you cannot do anything with. Attached to this webinar, there is a document that you can click on and download that's going to show the different management systems and what statuses are hard-coded in there. So take a look at that and um, you know, download it and keep it for yourself. So as you're going through here and doing what you wish, you can make the changes and know that you're not running into a problem. It's just the way it is when it comes to the different software. Okay, so I always like to start with the easy stuff. I mean, you may have statuses now that is in your management system that 
you got too many. And that's maybe I should stop for a moment and say, listen, think about your statuses. One of the things I try to do, and again, this is my personal thing, is I want as few statuses as possible, which means you, you know, you're going to still have to pay attention to it, but you can go as long and as crazy as you want to, too. But the point here is I say sit down and think about your actual work process and come up with statuses that may represent a couple of different steps or ones that combine a couple of steps because this display, you only have as much display in the background as you do screen. And yes, I know I'm going to show you how you can zoom in and out, but the thing is, still, you want to try to keep things simple, all right? So deleting any statuses that you may not may not want or have, I mean, the first thing is you want to make sure it's one that you can do it. And then once you do that, just select it, hit delete, answer yes. And what this is going to do is go and, you know, remove it for you. And you're going to see everything shifts around because of that. Adding a status is just as easy. Going over here and hitting add and then putting in what you want. And also, you may notice this little red uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer thing going off over here flashing at you all the time. You do have the ability that when you're building these statuses to actually put a timer on them, okay? So what I've done here with my waiter, I have my waiter set for 20 minutes. And if I was doing that with this status right here, basically all you do is you punch in that 20 minutes. All right. And then when you hit OK, that timer will begin to tick as soon as you put something in that status. And as you can see, after 20 minutes, if this was the example I was working with, it would start flashing. And I find that to be a good tool for certain things. For example, these are waiters. And again, this is the way I'm setting up. I got my waiters on the far left because we want to get them in the shop as fast as possible. So that's why I put them to the left for me because that's my priority. And I actually have this thing set for, I believe, for 15 minutes for this because that should be in the shop within 15 minutes. The next thing over that you see here on my work in progress is welcome station. That's the kiosk that we have that people can sign themselves in. And when the customer uses that kiosk and we open that up in the status right here, I want that to remind us that there is a ticket waiting for us to go and look over after the customers use the kiosk. And I think that should have a timer on it too. So that one's got about 20 minutes. But the beauty of the timers is, is that you can go in there and set them up any way you wish and you can change them on a regular basis. And that's the other point that I wanna share with you is that you're not going in once and making all these modifications you're gonna continuously make modifications and set it up where it looks and feels good for you. So again, when you're building or adding your own status, you can put in the name that you wish. If you wanna apply a time to it, hit the check mark here and put in whatever time that you wish, okay? In this case here, I'm not gonna have one, so we're just gonna finish that up, hit okay. And again, you can go back and take a look at these and edit them just as easily. All right, so you got a number of different ways of adding these statuses in there. Now, remember, there are some statuses that you're not going to be able to change or delete and whatnot, and that's just the way it is. So that's how you set up your statuses, and you can build as many as you wish. And again, from the top to the bottom, left to right is how you're going to have them displayed. That's a universal setting, and when I say that, when I set this up on my PC here, everybody else's PC that's using the Bolton product is going to see the same changes, okay? Along the same lines as workflow settings. What we're seeing here is the technician and status view in the background. This here gives you the most information all in a quick, you know, easy to read screen where you have a whole lot of information in front of you. Now, some of you may say, well, you know what, that's, that's, that's a little too much, okay? And you might want to go down to the technician only without I'm going to go to. But there's some uh, drawbacks to going to the tech only because we work with Mobile Manager, which is our tablet software. Uh, when you go to technician only, you're going to be losing the ability to uh, prioritize your jobs. You're going to have to go into your management system and prioritize the jobs because of that. Because the, the technician view, as I'm about to show you, doesn't really help you that way. But the technician and status is probably the screen that most of you folks want to use. And um, that's what we're going to be spending most of our time in. But let's take a look at the tech only view. And again, this is another universal setting. If I change it on my PC, everybody else that's using this on their PCs, the Baldwin product, they're going to see the same change. So I think if you're use, going to change, you want to make sure everybody's on board. So just select there, hit OK. And here 
it is going to tell you that you're going to work, use your prior, prior, boy, if I can only say that, prior priorities, <laughs> and it'll change the view in all the computers. And when you hit yes, well, that's what's going to happen in the background. A much more simple display. And again, in certain shops, this is probably going to work for you. Um, you do have a lot of the same options information-wise that I'll be going over with when we go back to the main view. But the idea here again is that you need to get in here and you need to set these tickets up in the priority that you want. And that means going back into your management system and doing that. Doing that right here is not going to happen. Um, if you're one of those people that just likes to stack things up and whatever, it's good. Um, you can do that if you see fit, all right? So we're gonna come back and show you all, well, I'm gonna go back to the main view and show you all the cool little things that you can do with all these squares right here. But mostly, just be aware that everything that we're gonna work with is as easy as a click and a drag and a drop. And that's how you move things over. And also here, I'll go over this again. You also tell the software, okay, I just moved that job to the tech. Does that, job, does that tech get all the work by leaving them selected? Or does that tech only get some of the jobs where I deselect the ones that the technician does not? Uh, that's basically how the software is gonna work, is just sliding things back and forth. So let us go back to the technician in status mode because that, as I said before, is the one that gives you the most information. All righty. So these are our two universal settings. These are the two things that you're going to use to set up, you know, customize your flow and everything like that, and they affect everybody. The next set of settings that I want to talk about before we get into the nitty gritty here is your workflow filters, which is located at the bottom of the screen. Excuse me while I get a little drink there. If you go to the right side to these arrows and you click on this, we are giving you the chance to filter per terminal. So as I said, these are universal. Every, com every computer is going to be affected by those, but these give you a chance to set up according to your point of view. If you have multiple advisors and a boss and a manager. You can ch choose the different methods of doing this. You can filter by phase. What that means here is, as you can see, this flasher up here is an estimate. If I choose not to have estimates, and there's shops out there that don't use estimates. They just call them repair order. Well, you just select that and see how it's not yellowed anymore. You notice how that square disappeared. Well, you're not gonna see them. Um, in my world, when I invoiced the ticket, that meant as an advisor, I'm totally completely finished with that job. So when I'm filtering by phase, I would take invoices out because, as I said, I'm done with it. The only thing that's going to happen is that customer is going to pick it up. And when that customer picks it up, if they have questions, I'll talk to them. But I might um, deselect that so that they're not shown on there. So, again, simplicity is what I'm going for. And if you don't use all the phases, take out the one that you're not, the ones that you aren't using. You also have the ability to filter by technician. Okay, your technicians you'll see are assigned down on the left hand side here. And you can filter by technicians. If you have one specific tech or a specific group of technicians, you can filter it so that you only see their work. And that is as easy as uh, selecting the ones that you want to look at and deselecting the ones that you do not want to. So all your technicians would be here. You can deselect and have them disappear. So you have, again, that simple point of view that's going to work for me and you. There's poetry and you probably don't like it. You also have the ability to filter by service advisor, okay? So if I'm John B. today, I want to take out everybody else's work because, you know, I'm not really concerned. Well, that's a team player, right? But here, I would only see the work that's by John B. And it looks like I'm doing most of the work today, too. But the idea here, again, is go through here and choose what settings, what things you want to say that are going to work for you. And lastly, you have statuses. Now you've created your statuses up here in status workflow statuses. And down here, you're gonna see the statuses that you currently have going. All right, these statuses here, you also have the ability to make them show up in your screen here or make them go away. Now, for example, I have a sublet status. And as you can see it right there, it's not selected. And what that does is not shows it's not showing any kind of sublet status, all right? Why? Because I don't have any sublets in today. So that's one of the reasons why I like these filters down here is because these could be daily filters that you change. If I have a sublet come in, all I'm gonna do is go there and turn that on and in a few moments, you're gonna have that sublet status pop up up there. And then that way you'll be able to monitor that vehicle, okay? So the statuses that you choose, 
can you can make them disappear and make them come back just by selecting as you see. So as you can see, there's an awful lot of different ways that you can customize this point of view to make it work for you. And it's all pretty instantaneous as you do that. All right, and all you do when you're finished making your adjustments and whatnot, just close the window. And again, remember, you have the ability to go back down to that window and open it up and readjust your settings. Okay, so let's get back to this. Now, one of the things also that you can do to customize your view is you can actually zoom in or zoom out on your overall work, workflow manager. And the way you do that is you're gonna hold down the control key on the, pian on the piano, <laughs> on a keyboard, all right, and then your mouse has got to have a rolling wheel on it, and when you have that rolling wheel and you have it held down, when you spin the mouse towards yourself, the top, you can make it small enough to fit in the window that you have, or you can spin the mouse wheel the opposite direction to make it larger, all right? So that's one other way that we can actually um, customize, but also, you have the ability not only to display this as you see me doing it right here in Report Pro, and that's because I selected Workflow Manager from down here on this menu. If you go up to the Tools menu and click on that, and now you use this Workflow Manager, well, it becomes its own freestanding window. Okay, so there you go. Now, um, this window here could be left anywhere on the monitor that you're currently working with. Everything that I've shown you still applies. If you hold down the Control key and move that, you can get it all to fit in here. And you can also, and this is one of the coolest things, I think, is that you can grab this and slide it to a second monitor that's hooked up to your current computer. And that can be used behind the work desk, the service desk. That could be put out in the shop if you're technicians, you want them to see their workflow, et cetera. And that will update on its own, okay? It will actually update as you're changing things, but also when you move to it yourself and you actually make any adjustments, um, you're going to have to be able to get to that and do that. So that's an awful lot of customization to make it work for you. All right. And we're going to stick with this setup right in here. So let's talk about this main window. And as I said, you have a lot more information in this window than using the tech view. Um, let's talk about the elephant in the room here, the calendar. And the reason I say it that way is because at this point in time, if you have any management system other than Mitchell, you don't see the calendar and please don't fret. The calendar function will be expanded out through other management systems. I don't have a timeline for you, but it's coming. And what happens? What does the calendar do for you? Well, this is one of those other steps that you can use to make your day go a lot faster and a lot smoother. When you click on the calendar, if there's any appointments available for today, as you can see, it automatically goes to 10, 15, 2019. It shows you any appointments that are available here today. And if you mouse over it and hold, you see the little window that pops up and says needs ride? Well, if there's any notes on this ticket, on this actual appointment, they will be displayed every time you mouse over. So what did I mean about how this is going to make your workflow better? Well, when a customer calls or texts you to set up an appointment, one of the best practices is to build that ticket then, have the conversation with the customer about the recommendations that you've made previously and what they're coming in for. And if you go in here and you build that ticket and you have it right here, it's gonna be very easy for you just to drag it right into your work process and then go in there and just finish it up because if you have all your jobs in place and the recommendations already authorized and whatnot, all you're gonna to need to do is just finish the ticket and get the customer on its way. And how does that work for you? Well, you just click and drag it to here. So I'm gonna put my unassigned up column. And when I let go here, it's gonna ask me, do I wanna convert it to a work order? Now, mind you, once you do convert this to a work order, you cannot bring it back to the calendar. So maybe, and the reason I'm bringing this up because if I goofed and I grabbed the wrong one and pulled it, before I hit yes, um, and I realize I made a mistake, I'm gonna hit no and then drag it back up there, or it goes up there by itself, just like that, okay? So that's one little note I like to know because I'm sometimes fumble fingers here. If you're looking for appointments and other dates, well, just click up here, and now you can scan the calendar, you know, forward and backwards and see what's coming in, and a great little tool. But anyway, as I said, clicking, dragging, and dropping, and you convert it here, well, that now is no longer an appointment. It is now becoming 
an estimate for you. And it may take a few moments for the software to update, but it will. Now, mind you also that whenever you move any of these tiles, and I'll go over this again, you're going to have this little window pop up. And what this is saying, hey, do you want to sign that technician? If I dro drog it down here to Melissa, hi, Melissa. If I drag this right down to Melissa, it's going to ask me, do you want Melissa to do all these jobs? And by leaving these selected, they will all be assigned to Melissa. All right, and you're gonna see this window come up many times when you're shifting jobs from one, from unassigned to a technician, from a technician to a technician. And the idea here is you can use this screen to split the ticket as you need be. Like in circumstances where alignments are done by just one individual in your shop. Well, and if there's an alignment on there, deselect it, slide it to the tech that's doing the other work. And then once they're finished, slide it over to the alignment tech, select the alignment and let them do it. So lots of options right there. So the calendar, again, it's a Mitchell-only item right now, but it's, I'm told it's coming for all the rest of the management system. So hold on to your horses and wait for a great thing to come. Now, earlier I said there's a lot of information at your fingertips, and that's one of the reasons that I really appreciate Workflow Manager. Because when you go to any one of these tiles, okay, there is a plethora. Yes, I said plethora. There's a lot of information available. Okay, so when I right-click on that file, I can view the inspection. So this vehicle has a current inspection going. I can click right here, and it's gonna go right into my inspections and whatever place that technician is in with that inspection right now, and it looks like they're just beginning. I'm gonna be able to take a look, see here. And that's great because if a customer happens to call or is checking on the status, just being able to um, left click on that. And let me be clear about that. This is a left click. I can view the inspection. Same story here. I can view the invoice or whatever state it is in at this point. If this is an invoice, I'm gonna see an invoice. If it's an estimate, it'll be an estimate, et cetera. But it allows me to go back to the document and take a look, you know, if there's anything I need to be aware of and working with right here and now. Right clicking again. I can print a loop sticker here and mind you, with all the advanced um, scheduling that loop sticker does, being able to go to one point and clicking there, and again, it's a right click for that drop down menu. All the information, if you've had an oil change by this, done an oil change for this customer prior, all that's going to show up. So if you had set a customer interval and everything like that, it's all ready to go. Again, one-stop shopping. I think that's the best way to put it. Sending a text message, okay? Well, every text message that you've built, you've got these pre-built messages that you have the ability to build in um, Message Manager, and they all show right up here. You can even go up here and compose one from blank where it's not built. And uh, it takes a few moments for it to open up and then you'll be able to build your message and send it right on the Richard Lang. So for example, um, uh, let's tell Richard uh, uh, vehicle is staying. Well, there goes that old tech typing, you know. All right, I already communicated to this customer that the vehicle may be staying, so it is. I'm going to get more talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Again, right-clicking text message and send text to pay. If you haven't explored text to pay, folks, what this is doing for you is allowing you to send text right to the customer with a copy, a digital copy of their invoice, and they can actually pay by text. And it's available to all you fine folks right now. If you want more information, please reach out to us and let us know. And then last but not least on this drop-down menu, that I right-clicked on the um, tile to bring up, is colors. Now, what, I've, what I'm starting to do is assign the colors to different things in my, my shop. This is JB Automotive, you're looking here. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, I just showed you that Richard Lang's vehicle is not going to be complete today. Notice that the black, the block, the tile is black. Well, black means overnight in my, my world here, my color scheme. And that's, I like that because now when I do a glance, okay, I don't have to worry about Richard. He's our, oh, oh, I've already got the authorization to hold it. And that tells me information without even interacting with Richard's, oh, how you doing? Have a nice day, go away. I don't have to do anything at all with Richard because he's already good to go. And that's, that's the way I see using colors. Now, again, I know some of you fine folks are gonna come out with some really good methods. So for example, another thing that I might do is if I have a tile in here, that's a comeback. I might go with bright red, but the only problem with the bright red is it may interfere with these other ones that are going on here. So when you're making your decisions, you'll have to choose which color you want to do. 
I mean, I've decided that blue is going to be my comeback color. So that again, it's another quick glance. I can look down here and see, you know, Warner working on that comeback. Is he going to get that fixed and finished and ready to go? That's what it does. So the colors give you some variety of things that you can assign as you wish. And you can even go with white too. Okay. So solutions, answers, you got it. Again, another way of customizing it for yourself. What do we have on the tiles? Well, let's go over here and talk about what we have on the tile. We have a clock. And also, I want to stop this. That's why I'm moving over here right now is because this is kind of crazy, these things flashing at you. But I have my wait set for 20 minutes. And if it goes over 20 minutes, it's going to start flashing. And you notice that there's a clock on there that's going to count it down for you. And as you click and hold these and slide them to the next status or whatever status they're going to, that clock will reset once you let go. Now, again, if you make a mistake and you realize, oh, I don't want to slide that one over, don't release. Just bring it back and the clock will continue. OK, but as you can see, it stopped blinking because now it's in the assigned place. This one will continue to blink until I interact with it. And if I feel that I need to reset that and still leave it in the waiting status, which would probably be a bad thing to do, but there's circumstances sometimes, you can slide it out and put it back in and that timer begins again. So another way of being able to control your tickets, your flow and seeing how it works. Now, I showed you that if I right click on here. I have access to all this information. If I left click, which is the normal method of clicking, and I do it twice, click, click, I also get even more information. I get the ticket number and customer information. I have the value of that ticket as it stands now with the way my jobs built on it. And I have the ability to take a look at the jobs. Now, one of the important points to make here is that this is controlled by the tablet. So you need to be using mobile manager in order to have this screen work. And what do I mean? Well, you see these check marks right here? Well, when I go into mobile manager as my technician is completing this job, they will be tapping on those check marks and showing you know that job's completed. And you see the green bar down here? As these jobs are completed, that green bar is gonna move across Showing. Now, mind you, it's job related, not time related. So that bar, if I have 10 jobs on here, that bar has five, seg I'm sorry, 10 segments to move over. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're looking at it. So let me show you what I'm talking about right here. So I have the technician showing that they've actually finished the first couple of jobs for a few jobs on here. Well, if I go over to my tablet, and I go into Melissa. Let's see which job was I working on there. Uh, and there you go. These are the jobs that are completed on this ticket. And as you can see, as they're being tapped off, as the technician completes the jobs, that they go over there. And now I'm going to go back and show you what it looks like back on the other screen. Remember, double click left button, your normal button. And there you go, you can see now we've added those jobs. But this here requires you to have mobile manager. If you don't have mobile manager, you'll be able to look at the screen, but you're not gonna be able to interact and have this crawl, crawl across, and you're not gonna be able to have those check marks showing. No, you cannot select the check marks as you see here. All right, so the jobs have to be completed in mobile manager. All right, so that, that's all good. So again, right click, drop down menu, left click, double left click, and then you're able to look here and you need to use mobile manager. Now, while we're on the topic of mobile manager, the other thing that mobile manager allows you to do is to actually put photographs of your technicians right on here. So that way you can identify the tech from the site right across here. And you can only put these pictures in here if you are using mobile manager. So let's go back to the mobile manager tablet. All right, and what you're gonna do here on mobile manager tablet, you're gonna tap up here, you do need to assign that tablet to the individual that's going to be using that tablet, and you can take the picture right here. It's pretty straightforward. Just tap on here, aim it, do a pretty smile, and then take your picture and hit OK. Now, mind you, again, if you don't have Mobile Manager, you cannot add pictures to that. While we're in Mobile Manager, look at how the work in progress, our, our, our um, workflow manager looks here. All the statuses that you have listed Again, this is from top to bottom, and it'll be left to right in the main window. All these statuses right here are going to be showing you the flow of the vehicle. 
And the idea for showing all the different statuses on here is because you want to see how it's, uh, it's progressing through. So, for example, this weight here is still hanging out there. Uh, this ticket's already assigned. This inspection is started. We actually have two inspections started for this person. And this is only Melissa's point of view because, as you probably already know, those of you that are a mobile manager, that you can go over here and set this up by going up to display. And you can sort it by workflow manager, which is underneath this menu right here. And since you have it and you're using it, you definitely want to choose it. You can also filter by the technician. Now, if you're a manager that's overseeing the whole operation, instead of uh, filtering it just by Melissa, you may go up here and select all and then hit OK. And what it's going to do now is show all the jobs in the status. So this is yet another point of view that you have for your workflow in your shop, and it's now living on your tablet. So as a manager, you can go around and take a look at all those texts and see who's doing what and what's going on. But when you go to the individual text, the recommendation here is to filter by that technician. There is no way of locking this, but that way um, you can at least have the technician see what they have going on right there. Back to the tech. All right. Let's move back to our main screen right here, and let's talk about some of the other items that we have here. Not only do we have Melissa's name and her picture here, but this 23.7 hours is showing the total value of all the tickets along in her jobs queue or whatever you wish to call it. So there's 23.7 hours showing up here. When you look at the top right here, this is showing how many hours each individual. Now, these are the hours that are actually input to the actual document. Uh, you have to have them in there for them to show up. So if there's no hours on that document, there's not going to be any hours showing here. So you get to see the total workload here, and you get to see and break down the workload right there, and that makes life pretty easy. You can stack numerous jobs, and what's going to happen here as you are stacking the jobs when you get, it's going to, again, ask you about which jobs you want to give to that technician. And again, you can split the ticket. Again, that's my uh, kiosk one. And when you get up to, I just need one more. It's going to collapse it so you don't have a big pile. There you go. So now you have the ability to stack up these jobs. So if you do have a very busy shop, you can do that right here. And again, just clicking on the one that you want to take a look at. When you open it up, it gives you basic information. Remember, you got that ever popular right click for the drop down menu and left click, double left clicking for your mobile manager. All right. So, Frank, you've been awful quiet. Is there anything that you feel we need to add at this point in time? No, I mean, JB, heck of a job. Uh, it's, folks, it's a great tool. and. You know, one of the things I would try to understand is make sure you understand the statuses in your shop management system. Uh, a lot of people have received this tool and they called us and said, you know, what are these statuses designed to do? And like JB said, it's really designed to control your workflow. If you have a smaller shop, maybe statuses aren't necessary. Um, but, you know, as you get busier, the statuses are great because not only can you control the statuses from the workflow manager screen JB was just on, but if you change them in your shop management system, it will update the workflow manager screen. If you change them in the workflow manager screen, it will update your shop management system. And also remember, you can change the statuses or the technicians can change the statuses on their tablets as well. So that's another thing I wanted to add. Um, what JB is gonna do now is gonna go into some of the different shop management systems and show you where you're gonna see your statuses. Oh, well, thank you, Frank. As you were talking, I opened up the NAPA. And if you look in NAPA and open up a ticket in the work order, you go right here. And the thing about this, they're not really statuses. They're more or less phases. But um, because we interact with it, we're going to use them as statuses. All right. So you have these four phases that you'll have available. And that there is in NAPA. When you go to, what else we got here? We got lots of stuff open. We got RO Writer. We open up RO Writer. Open up a ticket, you have your statuses right here, but also when you're in a ticket, you are going to see status settings, oops, that's the wrong button, right here, where you get the click. And as Frank said, if you change the status in here, 
It's going to change across the tablets and it's going to go through Workflow Manager. So you're going to be doing it anywhere. So you've got lots of options. If you don't want to live with that Workflow Manager, I don't know why you wouldn't, but um, you can move to other places and do this. All right, what do we got here? Up, oh, we've got Tire Master. And again, you're going to have to open up the actual document. And then on the lower left hand side, there it is. These are the statuses that ASA Tire Master has. Okay. And then moving further, the, 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 we got Max Tracks. Max Tracks, when you're doing the point of view from the main screen, you right click. And when you right click, now you get to change the statuses. And if I were to change these statuses right here, that would also take effect in both my workflow manager and in um, on the tablets also. So I think I got all the systems here. Yes, I did. So there we go. So at this point in time, Frank, um, we're going to open it up for some questions. We can, JB. So do you want the folks to use the chat window? Do you want to unmute people? Well, How would you like to we got over... We got just about over 100 people on board. That's going to be a toughie. I think the chat might be a more controllable way to doing that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to send a chat out to you folks so you can respond with a question, and then we'll read it out loud, and we'll give it an answer. How's that work for you, Frank? That works for me. All right, I'm sending out a chat message. When this comes out, you're going to be able to respond to it. And that's how you can send your question. And don't raise your hand because that's not the way we're doing this right now. But there's a chat message I just sent out. Uh, responding to that message, you can write your question in. And then we're going to take a look at it and see who, what kind of questions we have out there. And while we're waiting up. for the, the first set of questions to come in, keep in mind, uh, we do webinars every week on all the different management systems that JB does. We've now offered some of those at night. Take advantage of them, they're of no cost to you. Um, we have videos on our YouTube page. So there's a lot of training videos that you have access to. And lastly, keep in mind, we do an advanced level training class. We do them about six, seven, maybe eight times per year. And we call that Bolton University. So if you've been there, you know what it's like. It's two days of intense learning and we do some hands-on and we work inside the different shop management systems. Um, so if, if you think it's something that would benefit your shop, and, and the class is really designed for owners and, and managers and service advisors, our last class of this year is in about three to four weeks in Dallas, and that's November 14th through 16th. You can find that information on our website as well, or reach out to us and we'll get you information on that class. I think we still have about 15 seats in that class remaining. So, all right, all right Frank, we have back. some questions. I'm sorry, you done? Yeah, go ahead. I can't, you can only see the questions, JB. So, you're yes, I will questions. read them out loud to you. But also, you know what? I was remiss. There's one more really important piece to this whole puzzle. And it's not really a puzzle, but all the different bolt on products, they all work together. Okay. And you find folks have message manager out there. Well, now if you're keeping track of the actual status, how the car is going through the flow, I hope you know that you have the ability with Status Tracker, and I'm going to take you right to the settings screen right here. This is a setting that you'll find in there. When you open this up and you turn this on by clicking here, Enable Automatic Status Tracker. When you send this message, and this is going to customize itself just like your message manager ones, it'll put the customer's name in there. It'll actually put the vehicle type in there. There will be a link that shows up in this spot, and of course, the ever popular opting out. But here's the way it works. If you send this text message to the customer, once it gets into the repair order mode and you are using Workflow Manager, your customer can tap on this link throughout the day and see what's going on with their car. And ladies and gentlemen, this is bringing you up to speed with the Amazon effect that you may be hearing about and reading about now, where you know if you order something from Amazon, your customers do it, you do it, you know every step of the way. And you can always go back and look and see where it's at. Well, with um, using a status tracker here, turning this on and using it where you send this message out to your customer through Message Manager, they're going to be able to follow the vehicle throughout the day. Okay. And because we're making it so easy for you to do that, to set those statuses, that's going to be another great tool for you to use. So again, it's located at Message Manager. It's already there. Just go to Settings, go to Status Tracker, turn this on, 
And just like all the messages that we've already shared with you through Message Manager, where you can build them and have them self-customize, you can do the same thing right in this window right here. All right, so let's get to some of the questions here. And do technicians have the ability? Be, Go ahead. One quick thing with that, when folks, when you enable that status tracker, so think of it as kind of like Domino's. When you order a pizza, you can track the status of your pizza or FedEx. When you convert your order, work order to a repair order from the estimate phase, that link will automatically be texted to your customer if you have that turned on. Now, that link only gets sent one time. And that your customers can click on that link as many times as they like throughout the day. Here's the key. If you're not moving the phase and through the statuses and you're cut and you send that to a customer, you could look kind of silly. So you want to make sure if you're going to enable that and send a status tracker to your customers that you are using the statuses to control your workflow. So just food for thought. All right, Frank, good? Yeah. All right, I've got a couple of questions along the same line. You did mention it. Um, the question is, do technicians have the ability to change the status within Mobile Manager and their tablet? And yes, they do, and this is how you do that. You'll see on your main order screen, the status is right here. And all you have to do is tap and hold and let go, and there you go. There's all the statuses that you have right in there. And all the technician needs to do if they're, what are they doing? Uh, let's see, let's turn it to an estimate right now. And there it goes. And as Frank already mentioned, that will go out to all the different places that that status has to go. So just tapping and releasing and then choosing the status that you wish, that's what changes it throughout the whole system. All right, what other questions we got here? Da, 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 da. Uh, if you split the ticket between texts, does the block show up on each text screen? And Frank, I am pretty sure the answer to that is yes. Can you uh, verify that? Uh, currently, it's no. So okay. the bulk of the work, whoever is signed as the default technician, that block will sit in their queue. So the goal is, if, like JB said earlier, if you're going to have an alignment and the default technician is going to do all the work except the alignment, let the technician do all that work, take the cube or the tile when everything else is completed, and move it to the other technician to finish the alignment. So that's kind of how we're going to do it now. Um, we're trying to figure out a way to dual assign it um, and, and make all that work in the workflow screen. But one place you will see it if it's dual assigned is technicians will both see those jobs on their tablets. So that's the place to find it if you're a technician. All right, rounding off a couple of questions here. Is this available for iPod? Hi, <laughs> Chrome Mama. And uh, which tablets are approved? Now, for the Apple world there, folks, I'm an Apple fan, but unfortunately, just the way their, um, their software is set up, I don't see that in the near future from Bolt-On. But um, Frank can tell us exactly which Android tablets are the best ones for that. For the iOS system, the Apple system, Folks, one reason we hadn't built this technology yet, and not to say we will never do it, is we are licensed Android developers. So what that means is our team internally here, if something goes wrong in a tablet or something there needs to be fixed, a bug or something like that, our team can immediately fix those bugs and release that update to all of you. And, and those things can go out within usually an hour. Unfortunately, on the iOS or Apple platform, if we make those same fixes. We then have to release those updates to Apple to then post on their iStore, and sometimes that could take up to two weeks. And what we don't want to do is fix a bug and then have something take two weeks for you folks to get an update from Apple. So that's one of the reasons we haven't done that yet. Um, uh, secondly, really the Android equipment is about on average, if you look at comparable products, about 20 to 30 percent less, you know, for a comparable tablet. So that's another reason. Uh, the approved Android devices, you want to find an Android device that's running version 5.1 or greater. Uh, hopefully nowadays, most of all these Android devices are all up to version 9. And you want to have an Android device that has a rear-facing camera of at least five megapixels. 
and, and the higher that number, the better the picture quality. Most of them have an autofocus feature. Uh, having a flash built in is huge. It's not necessary, but it does make a big difference. Uh, you can buy external lights if you need to. Um, and, you know, one of the other things is we, we keep tablets here. So if you're not sure which ones to get, we do have tablets here. Uh, an 8 inch tablet runs about $249. We have all the protective covers, and we program them here before we even send them to you. So it saves you some time of going out and have to buy them, you know, at a Best Buy or Amazon or wherever. And Question. along those lines, too, well, you had some really great points about the Android. One of the ta um, questions here is, uh, our tablets don't have a screen that looks like the webinar, and we don't have a workflow button on a tablet. So do I need to update the tablets? Well, that's a possibility. And as Frank already told you, um, uh, you need to have one of the later and greater ones, and there's a certain point where our software does not support. And you probably have better information on that than I do, Frank. But um, if it does look different, that might definitely need mean that you need to do some kind of an update. Yeah, if if, if you, it's possible that you could be running a tablet that has a version of Android that's less than 5.1, and your tablet might not be be able to be updated to 5.1 or greater. So what happens is our updates that we release will not go through. You'll get what we call a parsing error. If that is the case, and there's not many of those Android tablets you can't update out there, it's time to consider buying some new tablets. Uh, typically they're tablets that were probably manufactured three or four or maybe five years ago. So if you run into trouble and you're not sure, you can always reach out to our support department. All right, so another question comes in in the workflow screen. When a technician starts the inspection, does it automatically change the workflow inspection, start it, or complete it? Yes, that does work automatically. And again, it's just the same thing as we talked about earlier. Wherever you change the status throughout our software, it will be reflected in different places. All right. Yeah, a couple of questions about the screens not appearing the name. Uh, some people asking about the product pricing and stuff of that sort. I don't know if that's something you want to get into here. Yeah, I mean, product pricing for which? There, there, folks, there's no charge for this workflow manager. It's part of your Report Pro subscription. You just have to make sure you have the update that we released about a month ago. You know, the question is, what is the upfront investment for this system, and do you guys sell the tablets, et cetera, as well, subscription pricing per month? Yeah, folks, uh, it varies. It's kind of an a la carte package, so, right, we have a bunch of different products. What JB can do is if you're looking for pricing, um, JB can put my direct number in, and I you feel free to call me, and I will get you out to one of our sales people, or I can answer your questions myself. <coughs> So we'll put up um, my contact information as this webinar ends. Okay, and we also have some people sending us some phone numbers and stuff like that, which I'll grab. Uh, I think we're pretty much there. I think you already answered this one. Is there a way for the alignment tech to be able to see just the alignment labor line instead of all the jobs on the ticket? And uh, I would say no, uh, because you can't split the ticket, but it only shows up in one person's Yeah, so queue. folks, for that question, what, an easy way for the technician to know, so remember, if you dual assign a ticket on the tablet, both technicians that are involved will see it on their work in progress. But one thing where a technician can see and try to figure out what jobs he or she's assigned to, JB, if you click on one of those invoice or one of those work orders on your tablet, as you go into a, you see all those labor lines there, folks, in blue? Below it will have the technician that's responsible for doing it. And at any point, you can click on any of those labor lines <coughs> on the tablet. That's a part line, JB. On the labor line. <laughs> Woo -hoo. And there's the technician's name also. If you need to change it, by all means, you can change the technician there. If you dual assign a specific labor line, so JB, if you go back to the main work order screen, 
So if you dual sign a labor line, and JB, if you scroll up a little bit, uh, there should we'll say multiple technicians. Well, where you see the technician's name, it'll say multiple technicians assigned. So let's say you have an alignment that two people are working on, and you give it to Randall and to Bob. Where you see the technician's name, it will see multiple technicians selected. And then you just tap on the labor line, it'll tell you what technicians are selected to it. All right. Anything else? And folks, stay tuned. We're coming out with a lot of great stuff. Uh, you know, so stay focused. We're going to send a lot of emails out. And like I said, we try not to bother you folks with too many emails. But when we do send them, it's because it's really something important. So make sure to read the emails. It'll give you a lot of ideas of what's coming up and what we have on in the works.